Welcome to this video lecture. Uh, in this module, module 7, we're going to be digging more into optimization. Uh, keep in mind there are entire classes you can take just on very specific parts of optimization, so I'm just going to be introducing things from a very conceptual point of view. But if you find that this is something you need to learn more about or want to learn more about, I would recommend that you uh, certainly look up other video content on optimization or take an entire course on optimization or multiple courses. Uh, so this is a very complex topic and we're just going to be give, covering it from a very high level. We did talk about optimization in the context of machine learning where typically when you're trying to find a model via machine learning you provide sort of a model architecture with fitting parameters and then you use optimization to determine the optimal value of those fitting parameters in a way that minimizes some objective like the minimize the sum of squared error between your model and the actual data. So that was one application of optimization but there are a lot of applications of optimization. Uh, so first we're going to talk about the structure of an optimization problem. By convention, uh, you're typically in optimization you're trying to minimize some objective function. Uh, naturally in the real world sometimes you want to maximize things like you might want to maximize the speed that a car can go or you might want to maximize the real-time profit of your plant. So in those cases if the software you're working with or the toolbox you're working with in a programming language uh, requires that you be minimizing a function what you do is uh, to transform a maximization problem into a minimization problem you just try to minimize the negative of the objective function rather than to maximize the raw objective function. So instead of maximizing profit you would minimize negative profit and it's just that simple. But that's just the convention in the world of optimization which is can be a little strange sometimes. Alright so this f of x is our objective function. It is a function of some combination of decision variables x. So our decision variables are typically, you might have a bunch of different decisions to make in your <clears throat> in the optimization problem that you're solving. So maybe this is a chemical plant. Maybe the decision variables that you have are flow rate, uh, energy input, maybe flow rate of a different commodity, maybe valve position. You can have just a whole bunch of different decision variables. Each of those would be a scalar or a single number but then by convention you group all of those different scalars just into a vector like this x and then the nomenclature works so that you're minimizing these set of decision variables or these so the combination of all the different decisions you would make those go here and then uh, this f of x this is the objective function this is the thing that you're trying to minimize so just breaking this down we have the objective function or the thing you want to minimize. So you would try and formulate the objective function so that it is a function of all of your different decision variables. And if you're confused we're going to get to some very practical applications in the following videos. Okay so down here we have this ST that stands for subject to. So certainly if you're trying to maximize the velocity of your car for example you um, you, know, you could have a car that goes infinity miles per hour. Unfortunately cars are subject to the laws of physics and also the the laws of the land so speed limits and things like that so where we try and enforce those things we say that yes we want to maybe maximize velocity or rather minimize negative velocity but we are subject to certain constraints so you the constraints come in different forms so these are just bounds on our decision variables so if your decision variable is say the throttle position of your car, that's going to have a natural bound between 0 and 100%. Um, and so that's just just a physical limitation. You can't have your throttle valve open more than 100% or you can't have it closed more than 0%. So you can tell your optimization problem of these physical realities so it doesn't try to find a solution where your throttle position is 4000% because that's not physically realizable. Okay, so these first set of constraints are just upper and lower bounds on the decision variables themselves. You can also have equality constraints uh, built into your system, and then you can have inequality constraints built into your system. So you can say uh, x1 plus x2 has to equal 4, or you can say x1 plus x2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And again, we're going to get to some very practical problems here shortly. Uh, so 
this vector, again, these are the decision variables. These, you're trying to find the optimal co combination of these different decision variables such that your uh, objective function is minimized. But again, this is going to be subject to certain constraints. <clears throat> All right, so uh, optimization, mathematical optimization is done using math, of course. So if you have a physical system that you're trying to optimize, uh, you will need to build a mathematical representation of that system. So you can use engineering principles, you can use machine learning uh, to create a mathematical representation of this system. So that would give you what we call a model. So optimization is a, math, a set of mathematical routines. It's a mathematical algorithm designed to minimize your objective function subject to uh, your constraints by using the particular set of decision variables. And you have to come up with math that represents your system. Once you have this mathematical representation of your system, you send that math, you formulate it in the proper way, uh, like we talked about earlier, into an optimization algorithm. And so if you formulate the problem well, there are a lot of different optimization solvers. Many are built into Python, so this SciPy toolkit that we'll be using has a number of optimization solvers built into it. So our job is just to, to model the system and then to formulate our model into the, uh, the context that the optimization algorithm requires. Once you solve the optimization algorithm, then you can take that set of decision variables and feed that into your physical system. So you could use optimization to tell you, how do I operate a plant uh, in real time despite a, a kind of a changing plant and a changing environment and maybe a changing market, you can use optimization to be continuously solving for the optimal operation of that system. And we call that real-time optimization. You may also be wondering, uh, how do I design a plant in an optimal way so that I'm balancing my operation costs and my capital costs and still producing a product that is on spec? So you would need to uh, formulate the optimization problem have probably still have a good model of the plant that you're trying to build. Um, and then the optimization problem that you are solving might be more about how do I size this vessel or how do I size this heat exchanger. There are just a ton of different applications for optimization. This course is geared toward uh, engineering and specifically um, uh, real-time optimization of engineered systems. So that's what we'll be talking about. So stay tuned for the next video lectures where we're going to actually dig into solving optimization problems and I will show you how to solve some uh, simple optimization problems.